it's really an honor to be here in Cyprus. It's my first time in Cyprus. Uh, I've been in the Balkans for about two years, um, and uh, been falling in love with the Balkans in more ways than one. And uh, certainly, uh, been really enjoying meeting the people, seeing the um, scenery, and taking in the culture. And it's been a really amazing thing to be in the part of the world that is quite honestly, in my mind, one of the most human areas of the planet. So social business can transform the brand story from talking points, testimonials, and on-brand visual assets to a collection of authentic stories that build strong connections across all constituencies. Personal stories from suppliers can be shared with end consumers to make a product more than a product. Stories from consumers can be circulated back into the business to help everyone in the chain see how they are impacting lives for the better. So certainly, when we move in a, in a company from a hierarchy, like at point number two here, to a hub and spoke or a dandelion formation, we're really becoming social. A social business is where we go from a mechanistic, hierarchical structure to a structure internally first where people are able to contribute. According to research from the McKinsey Global Institute, published by Business Insider and released in conjunction with recent EG8 conference in Paris, the internet is responsible for approximately 20% of economic growth for the 13 leading countries included in the study, and an estimated 2.9% of total worldwide GDP. That makes the internet a more powerful driver of economic growth than mining utilities or agriculture. Now, as my friend Peter Economies would say, there's nothing new about that. Why? Because the heart has always driven business, right? People have always driven people. And the core of business is people. So your customer is inside this worldwide mind. What this is right here is it's one property from each slice of Brian Solis's conversation prism. The conversation prism and the worldwide mind are searchable, OK? Actually, if we can find our brand and our customer and our competitor in the worldwide mind, in the conversation prism, we're going to get some very rich data. Google's I feel lucky button doesn't work. Okay? Facebook's directory is not complete. Okay? If I want to extract my customer data from social networks, I need to be relying on technologies and on an ethos oriented around the human heart ends. So let's start with step one. Now, this is just one way that you could do this. You could do this a lot of different ways. Here is one tool that you could use called Researchly, where you can find the 1% that's gold, the results. You can analyze those results. You can connect to that community you find, and you can lead the conversations you see. Non-branded Twitter accounts are fantastic scopes into communities. The interest graph is a precise vehicle into the social graph. Twitter is the interest graph, or an example of an interest graph, and Facebook is a social graph. Facebook's like a wedding party. There's a lot of different people here at a wedding party, right? There's one going on yesterday. A lot of different types of interests at a wedding party. Here today, this is an interest graph. All of you are interested in hearing about internet marketing and social media marketing, OK? Twitter gets you in touch with conversations in interest graph. And then you can take those conversations, and you can move into the social graph. We are pulling out fantastic information and actually analyzing the latest and greatest in terms of those topics, real time. OK. <clears throat> when we discover the conversation around this whole circle, we're able to run campaigns that are comprehensive. We can talk with photos. We can talk with videos. We can talk with music. We can talk with tweets with blog posts, et cetera. We've got bookmarks with stumble upon. We've got communities of threads, basically. At Discus, we have millions of communities of threads comments. In Reddit, we are sourcing. It's a democratization of the news. Questions and key influencers answering those questions. And the answers getting voted up and down. And there's lots of conversation. It's fantastic. Quora.com. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm talking about a couple of the properties in that worldwide mind. By the way, the worldwidemind.com has all of this stuff there, and you can go there anytime you want. Groupon, obviously, is the new coupon opportunity. 
in terms of Technorati and accessing blogs, Technorati is a way of seeing the best-selling authors. Blogs are where authors locate, okay? Technorati is a way of seeing the best-selling bloggers, kind of like the New York Times bestseller list. There's many different products, including Paperly and Spot.us, where we are taking journalism to the next level. You've probably seen Paperly, right? Or Storify, these kinds of products where we're, we're curating tweeters, we're curating Facebook content. With Spot.us, I can hire with my friends a journalist to investigate something I want to know about, like what was happening in Sadagma the other day. Or the journalist can tell me, hey, this is going to happen in Sadagma, I'm going to get the inside scoop, pay me. Okay? Twitter is a giant river of information, and if you can hover upon Twitter with good social media monitoring tools, like Researchly, for example, you can pull out of that stream very specific information related to your brand and conversations that can inform sticky content marketing. Inside the organization, Yammer is, is kind of a way of discussing things back and forth. And get, is anybody using Yammer in Cyprus, by the way? Okay, yeah. So, I mean, like we had Google, you know, Google chat inside of corporations a while back where you'd kind of be chatting or, you know, AL chat or MSN chat. Yammer's the big one inside of Fortune 500 companies now. Again, what I'm doing is I'm going around that circle of icons pretty quickly to just show you these different options. Skype is the new telephone. Great telephone service, inexpensive. Facebook is the giant universe that it is and has lots of options there. Of course, we all know about Facebook. LinkedIn, I really like a comment by the CEO of LinkedIn who said Web 3.0 is all about data. And what I think he meant by that is the humanization of data and data becoming tactile, where data goes from being numbers to being something I can touch and I can feel and I can interact with, okay? Yelp, I can go into a town and I can find out a restaurant around the corner, you know, great souvlaki there, a good homeopathic doctor there, and that's where I can get toothpaste that I'm looking Four for. Square. How many people are using Foursquare in Cyprus? So this is a huge opportunity for brands in terms of accessing where people locate. There's a lot of third-party products, too, in terms of trending location. So keeping an eye on that for a brand is very important. Obviously, YouTube is doing a lot of things, and certainly social television is a big part of what YouTube is up to. Google TV. SlideShare is where you can go, and you can see the latest presentations from everybody that's speaking around the world. James's presentation just now is up on SlideShare. Sure. Putting a presentation on SlideShare is a great idea for a presenter, but it's also an opportunity to go and do some research about your brand and about your competitor and find out what's being talked about about your market. Meetup is a great opportunity to take what's happening for you digitally in cyberspace and then connect with people in person and do that in the flesh. And I think that's a really important movement for humanity to make, for sure. And last.fm is an opportunity for us to interact about our music, as is Pandora. Wikipedia is the new encyclopedia. These um, huge virtual worlds like World of Warcraft became something really interesting, actually. During the Iraq War, um, spouses of military, um, US military people were talking with, they were talking with each other inside of World of Warcraft. Ustream is an example of how we can be kind of doing TV right now. Wherever we are. I could be you streaming this right now if I wanted to. And Flickr is a great photo network from Yahoo, which Yahoo owns and is doing a lot of great things. It's basically, it's basically a blog of photos is what Flickr is. Now, that, those are a lot of external networks, okay? Where I can do the same thing inside of my organization that I do outside in Facebook. And that's a real movement for, for businesses. Fortune 500 companies globally are moving toward away from email and towards social networks inside of their companies, okay? So I can find common feeds inside of my global organization. Think about that dandelion, okay, the hub and spoke. A dandelion is multiple hub and spokes. I can find common feeds, common tags, common communities, and recommended connections. A really important product of social intelligence and discovering business intelligence and customer intelligence is an Excel spreadsheet. A great Excel spreadsheet has got the Twitter handle, the Facebook page, the number of likes to Facebook, the cloud score, the peer index score, whatever the influencer score is. That's still kind of you know, a, a growing science. Um, the name of the person, their bio, their location, their website URL, 
How many Twitter followers do they have? How many lists are they on? LinkedIn, Quora, YouTube. That spreadsheet, all those things I just went through, could go all the way over there, right? And I can take that spreadsheet and I can play around with it. As a person doing business intelligence using social media monitoring tools, this kind of a spreadsheet is really valuable to me. And there's some great tools out there that do it. Flowtown, Ethan Block at Flowtown and Fliptop, they're doing these things where you can send them an email or a thousand emails or a million emails and boom, they're going to tell you where those people are. Just a reminder again, the interest graph contains key influencers related to your brand's markets. How many people are skeptical of Twitter here and think it's kind of a waste of time? Okay. <laughs> it is not a waste of time. Repeat, Twitter is not a waste of time. Repeat, Twitter is not a waste of time. Twitter is a scope. I can find that consumer right now with Twitter, fast, in social networks. By the way, that spreadsheet should show you why. I began in Twitter and then I moved into all those other networks from what I found in Twitter. I did a project for a food brand in Athens in Greece, a global food brand um, with a global agency. And one of the products of that um, intelligence project that I did was this. Major nutrition web topics, top content within those topics, and then some recommendations related to that, okay? So example, bioproducts, right? Biological products, or organic products as we call it in California. Um, the new trademark for European bioproducts, uh, the aquaculture, the exhibitions, and the Greek government motivation for it. Price remains an obstacle in Greece, but biological products are promoted lately a lot by the government, especially if Greek or originated ingredients are being used. Getting insights on your customer and on your competitor out of social media data is a fantastic way to develop very precise content marketing, sticky content marketing. Okay? And I can verify, yeah, a lot of these agencies, a lot of you people in agencies are creative people. That's what we do, right? But we can verify what we're creating. Our creativity can be verified, and in fact, it can be enhanced by conversation with our customer. When Charles Dickens was writing his books, he would write a couple of chapters, and then he would put them out to the community, and he would get feedback in those chapters. This is, what, 100 years ago, 150 years ago? And then he would write the next couple of chapters. That was, he was ahead of his time. That's what we should be doing in agencies. That's what we should be doing in brands. What Charles Dickens did with his novels is what we should be doing with our brands and our campaigns. So sticky content marketing is a derivative of curating key influencers' conversations. When I take the last 100 tweets of 1,000 influencers in social media marketing and the last 100 Facebook posts and the last 100 blogs, and I put a team for two weeks on analyzing those and coming up with condensed statements about what they've seen, that's pretty dang good intelligence on where things might be headed and on what's going on. Apply the same metaphor and principle to your brand and to your product and to your service. Sticky content marketing is a derivative of curating key influencers conversations. Why? Because when I know what key influencers are saying, to whom, where, and when, then I am in the know and can deliver quality content into quality context. One of the essential things in social media marketing and in doing social business in social networks is delivering quality content in a quality context. When I say the right thing to the right person, when I say the right things to the right people, when I talk about the things that people are interested in, they are attracted to what I'm saying. Um, but here is content that, that staff should own within a brand. Facebook, Twitter, the blogging, YouTube. Then there's other content that's outside, you know, like wh white papers that are from other people, you know, inside of SlideShare, for instance. So again, quality content and quality context leads to engagement and income. So where's the money? The money in all of what I'm talking about and the money in social business has to do with good business intelligence derived from social media data using social media monitoring tools, okay? Um, so invest in good business intelligence, invest in proven technology, invest in market-specific creative, and invest in proactive community management. 
I just want to know, we can turn that into stories and numbers, but how do you turn it into dollars? It, it absolutely becomes dollars when it becomes what people are really thinking about us. And the dots become so joint. Yes. It absolutely becomes dollars when it becomes what people are thinking about. When I can look at my customer and competitor, and when I can know what they're talking about, and then when I can develop campaigns that are in a conversation with my customer, then I'm customer-centric, and I'm listening, and I'm friendly, and I'm generous. And that's what consumers like about brands. Thank you very much.